Ashley Booker Show. I'm back with another video. Um, oh my god, the air conditioning. Hold on, I know it's loud. Okay, so that probably sounds a lot better. So, <laughs> now I lost what I was supposed to say. But anyway, we are here today to do a video that I've been meaning to do for a while. I wanted to do kind of an inventory of all the series that I own that I have not yet finished. And my goodness, it is a lot. It's a lot of stuff. It's like piles and piles of books just sitting around me right now that you all can't see. So we're going to be talking about the series that I own that I have not finished. And when I say own, that means that I own at least one book in the series. I don't have to own the entire series. And I have to have read at least one book in the series. So that's a lot. And I did not realize it was so many series that I have started that I own that I have not finished yet and oof, I think a lot of it too is the fact that I like series because I like getting extensive insights to worlds and I like when things are carried out and we have this slow burn build of character development and plot development and world building but then sometimes I become so absorbed and so obsessed with the world that I don't want it to end. So then I end up having series that I start and some of them only have one book left that I need to finish and I just have not done it. So we're going to go ahead and get started because this is probably going to end up being a long one. I am going to give a brief synopsis as brief as I can of the series itself. I'll talk about which books I have read and I'll show you the books that I do own in the series. I'm not going to go into the series in totality like naming every single book in the series because my goodness a the editing b the length of the video this video also will not include comics graphic novels or manga because a editing b the length of this video so we're going to go ahead and jump in i'm going to break it up into different categories i think i have everything kind of separated i believe just by age group because doing it by genre just would have been too much because there's some sub genres in here so i separate everything by ya middle grade slash children's and then adult so we're going to start with the adult pile because i think it's the smallest and i think the ya is the biggest or i just own the most books in the ya We'll see. So the first series that I'm going to be showing you is the Outlander series by Diana Gabaldon. I have read Outlander. I own Dragonfly and Amber as well as Voyager and these are some chunky books. These are super super thick. There are very polarizing views and perspectives and ratings on this series because of some content that happens in the first book. It has literally been probably over over six years since I've read the first book so I probably want to go back and reread it and then I may go ahead and continue with the series so yes I think there are about eight books in the series I don't think she's written the last one yet or the one that's supposed to come out but I do know that these are some these are some chunkers I mean we're talking over a thousand pages type chunkers and if you didn't know Outlander series is about a woman by the name of Claire who ends up traveling from her time which I believe is maybe in the 1940s ish I believe is her time period and she ends up traveling back to 18th century Scotland. I may be super wrong with my dates here but I'm pretty sure that it's 18th century Scotland and that she ends up meeting this guy named Jamie and there's some romantic aspects but then there's a lot of historical parts of it too so and I know there's a huge debate on whether this is actually historical fiction or historical romance but I <laughs> I'm not gonna get involved in that because I'm not sure myself but yes that's that's what that is about the next series that I have is the shopaholic series by Sophie Kinsella I have only read the first book which is confessions of a shopaholic but I do own shopaholic takes Manhattan shopaholic ties the knot shopaholic and sister and shopaholic and baby and the reason why I own so many of these is because I think I found a lot of these at the thrift store so they were only like a dollar a piece type of situation so I, I got them really really cheap and this series focuses on a woman by the name of Becky who lives in London and she has a spending problem and I think it's a great insight to consumerism and I haven't read the series in a while I haven't read the first book in a long time but I think this is one that I definitely want 
to finish. I haven't really heard anybody talk about this series on booktube in a long time I guess because it's super super dated but I do remember liking the first book. The next series that I have is the Cartel series by Ashley Antoinette and Jaquavis Coleman and this is a street lit series that is based off of this cartel that is in Miami and it is super super fast paced and a lot of twists and turns that you do not expect. It is such a crazy series, such a good series and I just have not deleted it yet. I think I read the first two right before I got pregnant so I have read the second one which I do own and I have not read the third one which is the last chapter and I think there's about seven books in the series now but if you're looking for a street lit series that is just crazy I mean completely crazy like I read the second one and instantaneously bought the third one and was just like holy crap what the world happened and the only reason why I didn't continue the series is because I got pregnant and the first 12 weeks of my pregnancy was so rough with morning sickness and just being tired that I just I wasn't reading anything so that's why I ended up stopping the series but it is one that I want to finish soon because Hmm. It's just so good. The next series that I have is the Sookie Stackhouse or the True Blood series which I think pretty much everybody has heard of before. I have read the first book which I believe is Dead Until Dark. I don't know where my copy is. I don't know what happened to it but I do own Club Dead, Living Dead and Down, Dead to the World, Dead as a Doornail, Definitely Dead and From Dead to Worse. And I think like I said everybody pretty much knows every everything there is to know about the series. I think that Jashana just put up a video, I think it was her August wrap up part four, where she talks about the fact that I think she's on the 11th or 12th book of the series and she was telling me like just some some stuff about the series and how it it kind of does end up going downhill. But I am interested in continuing with the series and kind of figuring out what happens because I did enjoy the first book. I've only seen a couple of episodes of the series but I did enjoy it and this is kind of one of those everybody knows paranormal romance type of situations. So yes I may read some of these in October. The next series that I have I only own one book in it and it's Heather Graham's Crew of Hunter series. I read the first book Heart of Evil probably in the beginning of September of last year. I read it right before I had Baby Girl. I I believe which is interesting that I was reading just paranormal mystery slash romance and I really really did end up enjoying it. I think it was a solid book. It wasn't my favorite but it was enough to make me want to continue the series and I don't even remember how I acquired this third book because it's a secondhand book. I think I may have probably either picked it up at a thrift store or I could have just found it randomly. You know sometimes there's a used bookstore that I go to that they have free books that kind of sit outside so there's no telling but it is a secondhand book but I did go ahead and order the second book and I think I kept calling this the second book. This is the third book in the series. I did go ahead and order the second book in the series that way I can continue with it and then pick up the third one. This is great. It's just a, basically a story about these individuals who are paranormal specialists but then they all have other gifts as well and they work together to investigate these creepy situations. I think that each book follows a different set of characters from their perspective. So the first book we saw two characters that we were following and I think that they appear in the second book but they're not the main voices in the second book so I think she kind of rotates. This is a pretty long series if I'm not mistaken. I think there are at least over 30 books in this series so I have a ways to go but these are perfect for like the winter months like starting now in September all the way probably to like January, February. And the next series that I have is actually a cozy mystery series and this is the Bake Shop mystery series by Ellie Alexander. This is the second book, Batter of Life and Death. I read the first one, Meet Your Baker, a while ago and really really enjoyed it and I thought that this would be fun. I'm a big fan of like foodie cozy mysteries because I'm a foodie myself so cozy mysteries that feature food are kind of my jam. So this series is actually 13 books long or it's about to be 13 books long. I think the 13th book comes out in 2021 and this features a character by the name of Julie. It takes place in her bake shop in Oregon. These series of course like a lot of cozy mysteries are kind of formulaic. You know we have a main character that works in a food related place and then a 
murder happens and then they end up getting involved in trying to solve the murder. So I really like the first one. I think I gave it three or four stars. So I'm continuing with this one. I think I got third book coming in soon because I plan on reading a lot of mystery, cozy mysteries, paranormal and all that type of stuff come October. The next series that I have is a contemporary romance series and that is the Reluctant Royal series by Alyssa Cole. I have read the first two books in the series which is A Princess in Theory as well as Duke by Default. I have not read the other books in the series which includes A Prince on Paper and the two novellas Once Ghosted Twice Shy and then Can't Escape Love. These are books that I actually plan on reading this month. I put them on my September TBR slash on my radar, radar type of thing. So I've talked about this. I'm sure everybody is familiar with what happens in the Reluctant Royal series. Of course our first book follows our main character by the name of Nalidi who is being courted by Prince the Biso. Of course she doesn't know that he's a prince. It's kind of like a prince and a pauper type of feel to it I'm guessing. And the rest of the books actually follow different characters like a duke by default follows her best friend Portia. So I am definitely going to try to fly through these by the end of the month. We'll see what happens. The next one that I have is another cozy mystery series and this is the Hannah Swenson series. So I actually have read the first four books of the series but I only own books four and five. So I have read Lemon Meringue Pie which I read I think around the time too that I had baby girl I was reading the most random things when I was pregnant but yeah I did read this one and then I found this one at a thrift store I believe when I was out on maternity leave uh, which is fudge cupcake murder which is the fifth book and I believe that I just got the sixth book in the series which is sugar cookie murder or something like that this series is another one that's pretty long it's I think around 25 or 26 books there's another one coming out in 2021 these are also pretty formulaic. This is about a character by the name of Hannah Swenson and she also owns a bakery and she is always involved in discovering something that has gone wrong with somebody's murder. I think that I really really ended up enjoying this one because of the fact that I genuinely did not know what was going on and like who the murderer was in this book which is why I liked it. And what I do love about these, I haven't, I didn't check the Bait Shop Mysteries but I do love that these actually include recipes in them and I need to try some of them because some of the cookies that Hannah Swenson makes are so freaking good but I did enjoy this one and hopefully in October I'll be able to pick up the fifth one and the sixth one which I just happened to order. The next adult series that I own that I have started that I have not finished is The Song of Ice and Fire by George R. R. Martin. I have read Game of Thrones. I really really enjoyed this one. I have a full review of A Game of Thrones on my channel which I'll link in the card symbol above and it was just super fast paced. I like the characters. I've only seen season one of the TV show because I want to read the book so badly but I'm so hesitant to pick up the series and I don't I really don't know when I'm gonna get back to it because George R.R. R. Martin has not put out the sixth book yet and he's taken forever. It has taken so much time and I'm so scared that George R.R. R. Martin is going to die before we get the last book. So I'm so hesitant about starting it and I know a lot of people like in the situation with Robert Jordan with The Wheel of Time, he died before he was able to finish the series and Brandon Sanderson picked it up. But what bothered me so much is that I've heard, I don't know how true this is, I've heard that Robert Jordan was super organized and Brandon Sanderson was was easily able to pick up where he left off and continue the series whereas George R.R. R. Martin is not as organized. So if he ever was to croak we're screwed. So I'm very kind of like in a position where I'm like do I really want to start this series and then nine times out of ten I may not even be able to ever finish it because this man may not be alive by the time that he needs to finish the series. So we'll see when I pick this back up. It is really good. High fantasy. Classic high fantasy. A lot of people have read the series. I just I'll get there. I will get there. Probably when he releases his sixth book is when I'll pick it back up. That could be another two or three years from now. And the last series that I have in my adult section is Stepping to a New Day. This is the seventh book I believe in the Blessing series by Beverly Jenkins. I read this one years ago 
and loved it. I remember I got sent this one for review and I had never heard of the series. It was the seventh book so I jumped in and was not really 100% sure of everything that was going on but I was able to follow along enough and to the point that I enjoyed it. So I cannot wait to go back and actually start with the first book. I just need to buy the first book but I can't wait to go back and start with the first book and read it and continue through because Beverly Jenkins is such a great writer and I just I knew that just from reading this and I haven't even touched her historical romance stuff yet but just with these more this has some historical elements to it but I think this is more like contemporary romance and it's good. it's really really good. So if you've never heard of the Blessing series, I definitely would recommend picking it up. And I probably should tell you guys exactly what this series is about. So the Blessings novels are, I think there's like 10 of them out right now. I think one just came out this year. And it is about this woman by the name of Bernadine Brown. She catches her husband having an affair with his secretary and she ends up with like close to 300 million in the divorce settlement. So with the 300 million, she ends up going to Kansas, specifically Henry Adams, Kansas, which is the last remaining township that was founded by freed slaves after the Civil War. So I think she goes there to buy it and things into there. I don't, I don't know about the initial happenings of that because I haven't read the first book and I've only read the seventh, which is the town is well established by that point. So I need to go back and learn more. So I lied, I had one more thing to include in the adult. <laughs> <laughs> in the adult pile I'm just it's so many books y'all it's just like I keep looking and I'm now I'm looking like okay I did not include some other stuff okay but I didn't all right so the last one that I really do have on here is the first Mistborn trilogy I know that there's more and I do own the kind of filler novella that occurs in between the first era of Mistborn and the second era of Mistborn but I have the first three here and that's Mistborn, The Well of Ascension, and The Hero of Ages. So as you can see from the tabs, I have read Mistborn, which I really, really enjoyed. It was so fast paced. It was so good. I waited so long in between picking up this one and the second book that I don't remember specifics that happened in this book. I just remember like general parts of it. I remember certain parts of the magic system, which is so, so amazing. But I know that I absolutely loved it. I tabbed it, but I didn't annotate it. Like I just put tabs in it. So I'm gonna go back and annotate these. I think that this may be my goal probably going into November and December. I'm just kind of burnt out on SFF right now, but this is such a great series. I know that everybody's pretty much heard of the Mistborn series, but it's one that I definitely do need to finish. Okay, y'all, so let's go ahead and move on to the middle grade slash children section. I don't have a lot in this section, thank goodness, because I read middle grade quite quickly. They're easier when it comes to finishing series. And I read a lot of middle grade, like borrowed from the library because there's no way in the world that I could purchase every middle grade book in the world because it, I would be out of a house and home. But I'm gonna start with the series that I literally just started this year that I plan on finishing in October. And that is the Jumby series by Tracy Baptiste. So as you all know, I have read the Jumbies and I have read Rise of the Jumbies. I have done a full vlog related to these two, which was my mermaid, Black Mermaid slash Siren vlog. So if you want to know more about my thoughts related to the series definitely check it out there's only one more in this trilogy and for the life of me I cannot remember the name of that last book but I will put it on the screen here and I plan on purchasing that one and finishing it up and I think that it's going to be brilliant because I really did enjoy the series I loved this one I thought this one was really really good and this one was was a, an okay introduction but I can tell how much improvement was made in the second book the next series I have is actually a trilogy that I was sent and that is the real McCoy series so I have the first book which is the real McCoy's choose a crowd which is the second book and the third book is wonder under cover which is the third book and these are written by Matthew Swanson and Robbie Bear and these are really really cool because they have a lot of illustrations I think these are books that are really really great for like reluctant readers or children that are transitioning from picture books to chapter books 
or they're looking for more advanced chapter books but they still need that pictorial type of element involved in them that's what makes these so good and they're really really quick reads i have read the first one i read it earlier this year or maybe last year i believe it is just about this young girl by the name of moxie and moxie is a true crime detective as she likes to call herself and she actually reads these other books she reads mystery books that are that are related to true crime that kids true crime when I'm saying that not true crime but like kids mystery books so she reads these kids mystery books and she likes to be a detective as well so they're really really good I like I said I was sent these to feature on my blog which I did and I ended up reading the first one but I do need to finish the other two because I thought that the first one was really really cute I think I ended up giving it four stars so the next series that I have is the one crazy summer trilogy and that's one Crazy Summer, PSB 11, and Gone Crazy in Alabama. And these were written by Rita Williams Garcia. As you all know, I have read One Crazy Summer, which features the three sisters going to Oakland, California in the 60s to meet their mother, who is part of the Black Panther Party. And I wanted to read PSB 11 for the Black Oenathon that's taking place next month. And this one deals a little bit with Vietnam because her uncle comes back from Vietnam and this one is the conclusion and I think it just takes place in them going back to Alabama or being in Alabama something along the way something like that but I do need to finish the series because it's been a long time coming I love the first book absolutely love the first book if you've never read one gone <laughs> one crazy summer definitely check it out I was about to say one crazy in Alabama <laughs> confusing the first and the third book ah, I need to get to sleep but yes, if you've never checked this trilogy out, I definitely recommend checking it out. The next series that I have is the Wings of Fire series, and these are by Tulti Sutherland. I have read book one, two, and three, The Dragonette Prophecy, The Lost Heir, and The Hidden Kingdom, and I own book four, which is The Dark Secret, and book five, which is The Brightest Night. And this is about five dragons that are supposed to fulfill this prophecy and they're supposed to save their dragon kingdoms and the kingdoms all feature different types of dragons like mud wings you have ice wings you have dark wings well I think they're called night wings I call them dark wings they're actually <laughs> they're night wings there's rain wings there's just so many different types of dragons and they all have different abilities based off what kingdom they come from and each one of the five dragons that fulfill this prophecy actually are part of different kingdoms and they're trying to help their world out and the first five books are told from the perspective of each one of the dragonettes and so far I really did I enjoyed the first and second book I thought they were okay but when I read the hidden kingdom it like hit the spot the third book was like oh so this is going to be like good good and I really enjoyed it because I think I only gave the first two like three three and a half stars but when I got to that third book I was like holy shit these are actually really really good so these are pretty complex stories or this is a complex series because there's different story arcs so like I said these first five are told from the dragonettes the original Dragonettes, the original five, but then there are 14 books. So I'm not too sure whose perspectives the other books are from, but I think that what ends up happening is that we get some different ideas of like some different dragons and how all this stuff works together. There's even graphic novels, there's um, novellas in this series. They're just really, really good. And the cliffhanger that the third book left off of that introduces us to this fourth book, chef's kiss it was so good and the next one that i have here is a wrinkle in time so the wrinkle in time was i thought it was a quartet but it's a quintet so there's a wrinkle in time a wind in the door a swiftly tilting planet many waters and acceptable time I have read this numerous times because I had to read it in school and then I read it as an adult and then I read it for graduate school so I've read it quite a few times but I want to read it again because this is this is important in terms of women writing SFF and 
I know that this was originally written in the 60s I believe because we had to do a whole project on it in graduate school but I want it to continue the quintet but I don't think that Madeline actually wrote the entire quintet I don't think she did I could be wrong but I do want to continue I know that these follow they don't all follow just Meg I think at some point they follow her twin brothers and then also Charles Wallace so I don't think people like the subsequent books as much as A Wrinkle in Time. I mean this is a classic but I'm interested in picking up the rest of the books. And the last middle grade slash children series that I have on this list is the School for Good and Evil series by Saman Chanani. So I have read The School for Good and Evil. I own the second book which is A World Without Princes which actually matches my top. And the last ever after, I think there are six books out at this time because I think there's this first trilogy and then there's a spin-off trilogy. But these books are about two girls by the name of Sophie and Agatha and they get chosen to go for the school, to the school for good and evil. And it's one of those things where it flips a fairy tale on its head. So what you think is supposed to be good is not good and what you think is supposed to be evil is not necessarily evil and this was really really interesting i've read this is crazy this is super super crazy but i've read this first book twice and i think i need to go ahead and continue with the second and third books because i can't just keep rereading the first book <laughs> I don't know why I do that but I just I just keep wanting to reread the first book over and over again and I just need to move on and just let it go just just let it go and continue on with the series but I did enjoy the first one and once I finish the second and third one hopefully I will be able to continue and pick up the fourth fifth and sixth book in the series all right y'all so let's move on to the YA so the first YA series that I have is the Anna and the French Kiss series which is Anna and the French Kiss, Lola and the Boy Next Door, and Isla and the Happily Ever After. These are companion novels so they are not necessarily a series per se but characters from previous books end up in the book that you're reading if that makes sense and these all take place in different settings. I really cannot remember everything that has happened in the series because it's been almost probably a year and a half since I binged the first two and then I don't know why I never picked up Isla and the, and the Happily Ever After. I can't tell you why I didn't do it because it probably was one of those things where I always have a hard time reading that last book like I was saying and I did enjoy them. I know some people don't like some things that happen in the first book but I did enjoy the first and the second book and I'm looking forward to picking up the third one. These are YA contemporary books and they're older. These were hot on booktube a few years ago as a matter of fact. These are the reprint covers. The original covers were not as flattering as these if I say so myself but hopefully soon I'll be picking these up and finishing the last book. I may have to reread the first and second book because I don't remember much in the last book but they're like cheesy you know girl meets boy they flirt they want to be in a relationship don't know how to communicate like I mean really really cheesy the YA contemporary books. The next books that I have here are the Princess Diary books. I own the first three. I don't know where the first one is because for some reason my little girl loves to pick these books up and flip through them and she's kind of torn them up and I don't know which books are which but I do have Princess in Spotlight which I think is the second book and Princess in Love which is the third book. I think there are probably six or seven more books. I remember when Meg Cabot came out with the final book in the series and people were really really excited for it because of the fact that I think that Mia ends up getting married in that one. This is one that is a little on the dated side. I like Meg Cabot as, as an author but Mia Thermopolis is not like the Mia Thermopolis that you see in the Princess Diaries movie. I think the Mia Thermopolis that's in the Princess Diary movies is a much more likable character. The Mia Thermopolis that you meet in these books is not as likable. I listened to the first book on audio I think around October November of last year and it was it was okay. 
it wasn't anything to scream about but I do want to finish the series just because of nostalgia purposes and I think it would be fun to do a reread these are reprint covers I don't even know where to I found these to be honest with you but of course it's about Mia Thermopolis finds out that she's a princess of Genovia and she has to go through princess training and all that stuff so the next trilogy that I have is one that I have included on every series that I need to finish in XYZ year for like the past I feel like two or three years because I just haven't done it and I'm over myself saying that I'm gonna finish the series and I have not finished it but that is the Reckoners trilogy by Brandon Sanderson. So I have read Steelheart, I have read Firefight, and I loved, I love both of these, I really do. But I think the twists and turns that happen in Firefight just are so, so good. But I have not freaking read Calamity yet. I don't, I just haven't read Calamity yet because of the fact that it's such a good series and I heard that Calamity is not the best series ender and it drives me crazy that it's not the best series ender because I love the series so much. It's the craziest twist that you can get on the whole discussion about heroes and it's they're not really heroes, they're anti-heroes and they're superheroes but they're evil and they have all of these strange powers and it's so good it's so good as you can see like how I annotated this it was so good and I'm just nervous to start Calamity but this is a series that people don't necessarily like from Brandon Sanderson first of all it is written for more of a YA audience but also I believe that this is more science fiction than fantasy and I don't know if people really get down with Brandon Sanderson's writing in this one I know that he just put out another sci-fi one which is Skyward which I do own a copy of haven't started that one yet but I know that people don't get down with the Reckoners as much but I love it I have read both of these twice <laughs> twice I've read them twice I've read my Tosis, which is a novella I've read that twice damn it I'm gonna finish this book this year I have to finish this book this year I can't I can't sit here and reread these anymore and then not pick up Calamity I need to get over my fear of the ending and just go with it. The next series that I have here <laughs> which I should be embarrassed about is the Wrath and the Dawn duology. Okay so I have read the Wrath and the Dawn. This I actually got signed at Y'all Fest such a long time ago. Okay and yeah such a long time ago. I enjoyed it. I remember when I wrote a blog post for it and I gave it four stars and this is kind of a is this an Arabian Nights kind of retelling I think it's Arabian Nights retelling and this was that pretty end paper when this first came out and was printed those pretty pretty end papers that came in these books I just have not picked up look at end papers in this one I just have not picked up the the second book yet y'all I just haven't this one's also signed I don't know because I think what ends up happening is that when books come out and then I start hearing reviews I get hesitant when people are like oh the conclusion was trash and I'm like it makes me so anxious because I'm like oh the conclusion is trash it makes me so nervous to pick it up and this is one of those series where it's it's, it's a duology it's short it's I think it is an Arabian Nights retelling because the main character ends up having to live with this prince or whoever or king and she has to fight to stay alive and the storytelling element is in there where every time she tells them a story she it's another day that she can live and I think that the first one was well written but people keep saying that the second one was not as good so we'll see where I fall on that spectrum. The next series that I have here is not one that I really see anybody on booktube talk about. I don't think I've ever seen anybody on booktube talk about this. And this is the Spelled Trilogy by Betsy, Betsy Scow. Or, and this is a retelling of The Wizard of Oz. And I was obsessed with Wizard of Oz retellings after I read Daniel Page's series Dorothy Must Die. I read that entire series and the novellas, which I needed to reread of that series soon. 
but with this series I read the first book which is spelled it's just weird because <laughs> like there is Dorothy is different her name is Dorothea and then there's things like Hans Christian Louis Vuitton heels and there's fairy tale survival rules in this and it's more of a fairy tale retelling because there's different characters I think from different fairy tales and instead of Dorothy or Dorothea in this case coming from Kansas her parents end up going to Kansas and getting stuck there and she has to rescue them so I think in this book she's actually from Emerald City which is an interesting twist on it but I like I said I've read the first book spelled and the second book is wanted I mean look at these shoes though y'all see that heel that's a nice heel and then this is and then banishes the third one look at that heel that heel is Mm, okay but I really do need to finish this this may be like an October November series binge I don't know because I'm gonna have to reread the first one to know what the heck is going on the next series that I have here is an oldie which everyone has read on booktube except me I never finished the series don't know why but it's the Luna Chronicles by Marissa Meyer so I have read Cinder and I have read Scarlet I, and I still have not picked up Cress or Winter or the other two books and one of these days I will I think that these are definitely aging I know that some people who read them now feel like they don't necessarily hold up to the test of time I think Cinder was okay but I really really did enjoy Scarlet from what I remember um, and I don't know much about Cress or Winter except I remember when Winter came out and everybody's like oh my gosh this book is so long it was like over 800 pages by within pages type of situation but now I don't even know if you can really find these original covers anymore because they have gotten reprinted so that kind of sucks that if I buy winter it's going to be kind of hard for me to find that original cover because now they have new covers which whatever so the next series I have is the Covenant series by Jennifer L. Armentrout I have read the first book Half Blood which I actually reread this year and I have read the first book Pure which I did intend to reread this year I have Apollyon which is the third book Deity which is the fourth book and Sentinel which is the fifth and this is a series about Half Bloods who are descendants of Hematoi and mortals and Hematoi are descendants of gods and mortals and when you have Hematoi's have children with another Hematoi you get pure bloods but when you have a Hematoi have a child with another mortal they become half-bloods and half-bloods are not treated right and this is about a young girl by the name of Alex who leaves the covenant because her mom decides to run and then they find out that she needs to come back she comes back and some really really weird things start to happen so she gets trained at the school it was it was okay like when I first read this I think it only gave it three stars when I read it the second time I only gave it three stars because Alex as a character is just she's a, she's annoying honestly but when I got to pure I really really started to enjoy it because I felt like Jennifer L. Armentrout's writing got better in pure so I think I probably will have the same feelings when I reread pure but this is a series that I wanted to really enjoy because of the fact that it had like the mythology aspects of it I like anything that has any type of mythology in it so I was really really interested in that and there is a spin-off new adult series to this about a character by the name of Seth that's in these books he gets his own spin-off so once I finish these I can move on to Seth's books okay so moving on to the very very long series there's three very very long series that I'm gonna do very very quickly and of course I have the Mortal Instrument series by Cassandra Clare so as you can see I read City of Bones last year and I think I gave it three stars this is classic YA paranormal a lot of the kids that I work with are interested in this series I was interested when it first came out I'm not so much right now invested in the series but it is one that I do want to read and review because I have read some of the books so I do own which was the original trilogy 
which was City of Bones, City of Ashes, and City of Glass. I have read all three of those because those were the original trilogy and it felt like an original trilogy when I read it because of the fact that it ended and I didn't understand why there were three more books after that. But the second era of Mortal Instruments was City of Fallen Angels, City of Lost Souls, and then City of Heavenly Fire. So I did end up reading City of Fallen Angels and I, I gave it two stars when I read it. I didn't like it. <laughs> and I think it was because I could tell that the first three books were definitely supposed to be a trilogy and that it was an end of a trilogy and that it didn't make sense to add another three books but eventually I will go back. I was doing a reread of all of them so I did do my reread and annotate City of Bones and I need to continue and pick up City of Ashes. I don't know when that's going to happen but that is supposed to happen and then I also own the Infernal Devices which is Clockwork Angel, Clockwork Prince and Clockwork Prince. I have read the first two Clockwork Prince and Clockwork Angel and I like these a lot better. These have some steampunk elements to them that I really really enjoyed as a reader so I wasn't surprised and I think the characters in, in these books are a lot more likable. So the only one that I have left to finish in the trilogy is Clockwork Princess. Now of course I'm going to go back and reread them because I have found a couple of reading orders in which to add like all the other books and novellas and stuff. And I want to follow those just so I get the most beneficial reading experience. I know a lot of people are just not interested in reading them but I mean they're classic YA. I don't know when I'm going to get back to those because there's so many books now in the mobile instruments world but maybe one day I'll catch up. I know that she writes one new book at least every year so we'll see. And I know I said I was going to do the longer series right now but I just have I'm just grabbing stacks now. <laughs> Whatever is in front of me I'm going to grab. So I also um, have started the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy by Lainey Taylor. I listened to this last this first one on audio last year and it was okay. Second one in these are Days of Blood and Starlight and Dreams of Gods and Monsters. So I will finish the series. I don't know exactly if this is supposed to have Russian inspiration. I don't want to say yes or no to that but I, it felt like it did but I like I said I thought it was an okay read so it was enough for me to keep the book and want to continue the series. The next group that I have is <laughs> one that I feel like people debate all the time. Actually I'm going to do this series in conjunction with her other series and that is the A Court of Thorns and Roses series by Sarah J Maas. There's a lot of discussion going around about Sarah J Maas. Of course it is A Court of Thorns and Roses, A Court of Mist and Fury, A Court of Wings and Ruin, and A Court of Frost and Starlight. So I actually have read A Court of Thorns and Roses. I had made it 50 or 60 percent into A Court of Mist and Fury and life happened. I had something really tough happen in my life around the time that I was reading A Court of Mist and Fury. So it wasn't a DNF, it was life happen and I just didn't finish it. I will say, hands down, so when I read A Court of Thorns and Roses I gave it four stars. This one is going to be better. I could tell by the 50 or 60 percent that I did read that this one is going to be better. And I heard that this one was not as good and that A Court of Frost and Starlight was horrible. So I'm pretty sure that everyone knows what this series is about so I won't go into details. I do need to finish the series. I do want to do a good reread of it because of the fact that I knew that I had enjoyed A Court and Mr. Fury and I thought that A Court of Thorns and Roses was okay but I think that a lot of people it seems like a type of vice versa type of thing like if you really really enjoy the Akatar series then you don't enjoy her other series as much which is the one that I'm going to talk about next. Okay so everyone knows that Sarah J Maas has written a, another series well she just released the Crescent City series which I know that I am not a big enough fan to go out and get that book just yet because I haven't finished any of her other stuff and it just it just doesn't make any sense but I did want to read the series just to see what everyone was talking about. I have read Assassin's Blade which I have a spoiler reading vlog for which I'll link above and I think I gave that one four stars and then I have a spoiler vlog for Throne of Glass 
which I gave 3.75 stars and it really would have been like a three and a half star read but the ending was so crazy that was the reason why I ended up giving it 3.75 but I do own a copy of Crown of Midnight, Air of Fire, Empire of Storms, Tower of Dawn and then Kingdom of Ash and as you can see right there that bargain sticker says $5.97 that's how much I paid for this one <laughs> when I think the original price was almost like $20 for this book yet yeah. so I got this one for six dollars so everybody pretty much knows what this series is about Selena Sardothian uh, is an assassin some really crazy plot twists and stuff happen and she is uh, sent to a camp to work there until she is brought back by the prince and she goes through a series of challenges to become the king's assassin and there are some things that happen in the first book a lot happens as you can see by the way that I tabbed these books I annotated these a whole bunch because it's a lot that happens in them but I will be continuing the series maybe I'll pick it back up in December or January and I wanted to do a spoiler vlog for each one of the books so we'll see what happens there on to the next the next series that I have here is a series that I really 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 enjoy oh my gosh I really really enjoy and I haven't finished it I haven't finished it but it's all good and that is the girl of fire and thorns which was originally a trilogy but the fourth book just came out and I need to get my hands on that book but the first book is A Girl of Fire and Thorns, the second book is Crown of Embers, the third book is The Bitter Kingdom and I also have the short story collection which is The Girl of Fire and Thorns stories and like I said the fourth book to the series just came out this year. I don't think anybody's really talking about it because I don't know if people really are aware of the Crown of um, the Girl of Fire and Thorns series as much as uh, those of us that were on booktube a few years ago but this is about a girl who was born with this gem in her belly button and everybody wants the gem and it has some political intrigue and I just really really enjoyed the series and I think I loved it so much because I read the first two but I never picked up The Bitter Kingdom and I wish I had picked this up because now I need to go back and reread the series before I pick up the fourth one but this is one of those lesser known fantasy series and I think they're underrated but I absolutely loved it. As you can see my descriptions are getting more and more sparse because I'm trying to wrap this up it's, it's been so long and I still have like three or four more series to do we're gonna make this quick the next series that I have here is one of my favorite fantasy series YA fantasy series of all time I think it's a little lesser known some people are reading it now but not as much and it is the Fallen Kingdom series by Morgan Rose which I always say when I market it or like I try to push it to the teens that I work with at the library as like a why a version of Game of Thrones because you don't trust anybody and you don't get attached to anybody because you just don't. So the first book is Fallen Kingdoms, Rebel Springs, Gathering Darkness, Frozen Tide, Crystal Storm, and Immortal Rain. So I have read the first four in the series and I really really love them. She also has a spin-off series which is a book of spirits and thieves and the darkest magic and I have read this first one. I didn't read the second one yet and there was supposed to be a third one but because of the fact that sales were low with these books because they weren't getting pushed enough she could not afford to write the last book. The publisher would not would not finance her to write the third book which sucks. We're stuck in a situation with this series where basically part of the series is missing because of the fact that she couldn't publish it but it's really about these three kingdoms. There's characters from each one of these three kingdoms and there's some issues and problems that happen and there's a lot of plot twists and turns and like I said you really don't trust anybody. I need to do a reroute of the series. I don't know when this is gonna happen but it'll happen I promise you it's gonna happen okay so these are the last two series that I have the first one is going to be I lied so these are gonna be the last four series that I have here trying to organize them really really quickly but the first one that, that I have here is the diviners series by Lippa Bray 
I have read The Diviners, I have read Lair of Dreams, and I have read Before the Devil Breaks You, which is so crazy that all three of these have different covers, which sucks. So this is the original Diviners cover, which is so damn hard to find. I'm glad that I have it. And then they changed it to something like this, and now all the covers look like like this one which is super crazy these are paranormal historical fiction books that take place in the 20s and they're about characters that have these abilities they center around a main character by the name of Evie you could touch objects and kind of tell you the history of the object and there's some weird things that happen I will tell you that these are so good they're really really good on audio because they're read by January Lavoie who is just a goddess in her own right this one made such a freaking political statement okay this was released around the time that Trump was elected and Libba Bray made a hell, she made a hell of a statement with this book, especially in her author's note in the back. Ciao. It's just a good series. You need to check it out. And I have another one by her, which is the Gemma Doyle trilogy, which I need to get the second and third book. I had them at one time. I don't know what happened to them. But the first one is A Great and Terrible Beauty. And I have... This one is signed and so is my first book of the Diviners. I met Libba Bray a few years ago. She's really, really great. And this is a, another paranormal historical fiction that takes place at this boarding school. I don't remember much about it, but I will say these this these books and the um, the Diviner series are connected in a small and subtle way. So I don't know how many people in booktube know that, but they are connected in a way there is a crossover a small crossover albeit i don't know i haven't finished the series or the diviner series so i can't speak in full about how they're connected but they are slightly connected okay so yes 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 i may look at doing those in october the next series that i have here is the girl from everywhere duology by heidi heilig heilig and this is a time travel series where this girl can I don't know whether she can recreate maps or but she can use maps to travel to different places whether they're real or imagined at any time and place and honestly that's all I remember about this book but I really enjoyed it the second book is a shift beyond time which I have not picked up. This book was published about four years ago. I don't know if it made a big scene on booktube or not, but I did read this originally as a library book and I, and I enjoyed it enough to pick up a copy. I just need to get the second book and finish off the duology. And finally, the last series that I have here, <laughs> thank goodness, is the Grishaverse trilogy by Lee Bardugo. So I have Shadow and Bone, Siege and Storm, and Ruin and Rising. I did end up reading Shadow and Bone for a graduate class a couple of years ago and I ended up really really enjoying it. I really really did love it and I was like I really want to read the rest of the series. I just haven't done it yet because I've been reading everything else except this and I know that you don't necessarily have to read these before you read Six of Crows and whatever the other book is in that duology and then I know that there's a spinoff series that everybody is talking about but this is probably one of booktube's most hype series and this is one that booktube did not let me down on like I really enjoyed this but I think I really like Lee Bardugo's writing which is probably what it is so yes I will be reading these soon everybody knows what these are about all right y'all so I don't know how many series that was I don't even want to count I'm not gonna count I'm sure I'll figure it out probably by the time that I start doing editing but my battery is about to die that's how long I've been sitting here doing this I can't even tell you how much raw footage probably this is going to be but as you can see I love starting series and not finishing them it's a thing that I do it's it's who I am as a person so I don't know whether this means I need to stick to standalones or whether I just need to spend 2021 catching up on series and that just be my thing that I need to do but ugh, I don't know what I'm gonna do but yeah or maybe just pick one or two series and really really focus on reading them throughout the year and really get my ish done the way I need to get it done but I'm sure there are series on my shelves that I miss because actually I'm looking at my shelf and I see one already that I missed but hey it's just gonna be missed because I'm I just can't do anymore but if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you want to see more content from me click the subscribe button if you're looking for ways to support my channel the links will be down below if you're looking for me on social media all the links will be down below and I will be back with a, another video soon if you have made it this far into this video 
tell me what are some series that you started that you need to complete you don't have to own them just tell me about some series that you started that you really really want to complete because if you've made it this far in this video you are amazing you are a gem i appreciate you all right y'all i'll be back with another video soon bye